Good morning. We gather around the Lord's table at this time. It's a, a time that's central to us as a New Testament congregation. The breaking of bread instituted by Christ for his church before his crucifixion. Many denominations don't follow the weekly example that we see in the New Testament, the remembrance of Christ's sacrifice. My question to you is, how often do you remember, or how often do you need to remember that sacrifice? How easily is it forgotten? While the crucifixion had not uh, occurred at the time of the Lord's Supper's institution, it had been foretold by Christ as late as two days prior to his disciples. In Matthew 26, it's recorded, Christ tells them, you know that after two days, the Passover's coming, and the Son of Man is to be handed over for crucifixion. Now, in giving the emblems of the Lord's Supper, he explained that the bread represented his body and the contents of the cup represented his blood, which would establish a new covenant that would provide the forgiveness of sins. However, within, ma excuse me, within mere hours of Christ giving these emblems to the twelve, They'd all leave him, having fallen away. Later that evening at the Mount of Olives, Jesus addressed the overconfidence they had in their faith. In John, it's recorded that a disciple stated, Now we know that you know all things and have no need for anyone to question you. By this, we believe that you came from God. And Christ responded to them, Do you now believe? Behold, an hour is coming and has already come for you to be scattered, each one of you, to your own home and to leave me alone. And yet I'm not alone because the Father's with me. We all remember Peter's three denials but uh, we very seldom reference that all 12 of the disciples fell into the same hole that Peter did. Matthew records details of this part of the conversation. In chapter 26, he says, Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night, for it's written, I'll strike down the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. As he quoted scripture from the Old Testament. Despite the fact that they'd fall away, Christ expected them to repent and return to him and the work that they're being trained for. This can be seen in his address to Peter regarding Peter's three denials to come. In Luke, it's recorded that Christ says to Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Now, if those that walked with Christ were that susceptible to falling away that quickly, how much more apt are we to stumble? How often do we have to stumble or how far do we have to stumble before we're no longer under the grace that was purchased for us by Christ's sacrifice? I don't even want to know. But what I do want to remember is that when I've been caught up, when I've succumbed to the desires of the world and the pride of the flesh, I want to know that Christ died for me. I want to remember that. 
I want to remember that my sins have been washed away by his blood. And that I need him more than anything that I could ever desire. I want to remember that I don't deserve him. But he still wants me. While, while we may stumble, we should want to never forget. And that remembrance, in part, is rooted in our participation in the Lord's Supper this morning. That we will not forget that we're sinners. We're not deserving of the grace that has been proffered for us on the cross by our Lord being washed in his blood as part of the new covenant and his New Testament church. Please pray with me. Father, as we come around the table this morning, we recognize that you have provided yourself in Christ. We recognize that you are Lord, you are God, you're our creator, and you have provided for us a means to be justified. Not that anything that we could do would be qualification for your presence. But you, despite all of our flaws, all of our rebellious natures, have provided a way that we can approach you cleansed. We thank you for the blood that you've shed on the cross. We thank you that we have this time that we can come together recognizing this tremendous gift, recognizing our own shortfalls, and recognizing that it's only accomplished because of your desire, your love for us. We thank you for that. In Christ's name I pray, amen.